Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today we're going to talk about this Lava Hound deck. It's a new meta deck and you can see right away it has lightning in it. Now, uh, we're going to be joined by pro Timo from Sandstorm. He is a really good pro player, and he's been having a ton of success with his deck. He's got he's rattled off now, I think, four 12-win grand challenges in a row, and has had a lot of success with it on ladders. So it's great, kind of a new meta Lava Loon deck. Now, or excuse me, Lava Hound deck, no balloon necessary. So today, I want to share with you guys five tips to make you a better Lava Hound player. Now, we're going to be focusing mainly on this deck, but most of these tips will also apply to various different Lava Hound decks, whether it be normal Lava Hound uh, with Miner or Lava Loon. So let's get right to them. Uh, before we do, real quickly about this deck, you might be asking yourself, Ash, I saw your episode two days ago when you talked about four cards that still needed buffs or nerfs, uh, even despite the most recent balance change, and one of those cards was Lightning. So now, two days later, you're sharing a deck with lightning in it? Well, according to Teemo, lightning is a great surprise effect right now, and especially in beatdown, he actually likes it right now. And the reason why is you think about all the popular defenses. E-Wiz, Ice Wiz, Three Musketeers, Mega Minion, Flying Machine, Everything dies to lightning and soon to be magic archer, which I suspect will be a very popular card as well That also easily dies to lightning So you have a lot of options to use your lightning in most decks even musketeer obviously uh, Most decks carry you know one or two of those cards oftentimes you can get that value out of the lightning You also have minor so you have either might lightning or minor to attack your opponent's pumps Okay, let's move into the tips. So Timo's number one tip, or I guess not not in any order, special order, but his number one tip was uh, in the first two minutes. You don't want to over support your Lava Hound, okay? And what does he mean by that? Well, usually Timo will pick one troop to support his Lava Hound with. Usually a, uh, a Mega Minion, but not always. It depends on what the opponent has in their deck. And then what he's going to do from there is wait to see what they do. In single Single elixir time is very very important to be patient because you're going to almost always have to use a spell your opponent will have minion horde or they will have you know bats or something right so you're gonna have to have your arrows at the ready and in double elixir time you're going to have to have certainly your lightning at the ready usually in single elixir He'll just do a small push. Lava Hound plus Inferno Dragon. Log of Lava Hound plus Mega Minion. And then he'll have the Miner ready for that Princess. Or he'll have the Arrows ready for that Minion Horde or the Minions. And then he'll just wait and see and, and chip away at the tower. You're not going to get one of those huge pushes in, in most situations in the first two minutes where you're going to take down a tower. So always be cautious when supporting your Lava Hound. You never want to drop Inferno Dragon and Mega Minion unless the situation calls for it. And what do I mean by that? I mean, let's say they do something silly and drop like an E-Wiz right at the bridge. Of course, and you have the Inferno Dragon, you can go ahead and, su and supplement that attack with your Mega Minion under that circumstance. Normally, you just wait. You just wait. Okay, number two, tip number two, is don't be afraid to play the Lava Hound at the start of the game. So we're in a meta right now where playing the Lava Hound at the start of the game is still advantageous in the eyes of Teemo. He says that it's a smart move because especially in this deck, as with most Lava Hound decks out there, you have two strong ground counters. You have guards, which are absolutely paramount in this deck. Even if they're under level for ladder, I would still run guards in this deck because of their shield. Shield mechanic doesn't matter how uh, underleveled they are. Even if a rocket comes in, they're still going to be able to take another hit, right? So I would use guards and tombstone, obviously. So two really strong cards, tombstone and guards, actually even Inferno Dragon against tanks. So that means dropping your Lava Hound at the beginning, you still have enough elixir to be able to defend smartly. Now the only situation where you're not going to drop the Lava Hound at the beginning of a match is, can you guys guess it, 
is if you're not playing with the fixed order selection on and the last or one of your uh, first five cards is not tombstone and guards so if you have tombstone and guards as one of your last three cards then you don't want to play your lava hound as the first opening play tip number three is this is a very important one he stressed this one uh, a, a lot here and that is uh, specifically to this deck okay and it's or, or any deck where you have minor lava hound which is really popular right now I, I would say it's even keel right now with lava loon which is rare in the meta is you have to be very careful about when you choose to use your minor this is actually the number one mistake that Lava Hound players make using a Lava Hound Miner deck. And it's a mistake that I used to make as well. And that is sending in your Miner almost, you know, every time the Lava Hound's about ready to die, you think to yourself, okay, well, I'm going to have pups. I'll send in my Miner to tank for them, right? That's not how you want to play the Miner. Uh, you really want to get value out of your Miner. So you want to reserve him for taking out your opponent's pumps or targeting again that princess or that musketeer that's how you want to use your miner just sending in the miner especially in the first two minutes in double elixir time you can get more aggressive sending that miner in just on the tower however in single elixir time you don't want to be sending in the miner just for the hell of it okay you want to make sure he's serving some utility because the pups will do plenty of damage without the miner tanking for them so that's really important guys don't send in your miner unless you have a clear target until double elixir time. Tip number four for you guys is against golem decks, other big heavy beatdown decks. What do you do in those situations? Some of you might already know the answer to this from the Botchum interview that I did uh, a few, I think about a month ago now. I'll include a link to that in the description below if you want a longer kind of tutorial on how to play Lava Loon with Botchum. He's a great t uh, teacher. By the way, side note, I've gotten a lot of comments about how you guys really like a pro instructing me to play decks. So I'll be doing that more frequently in the future. I'm really excited about that because I get better too, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Anyway, the tip is against a golem deck, you always want to go same lane. Same lane against golem decks. Oftentimes, we still see players going opposite lane, even kind of doing a punish push at the bridge in the opposite lane. That's something you would absolutely don't want to do, but more often just placing that Lava Hound in back of the other lane. It's not something you want to do. You always want to go same lane as the lava, excuse me, as the golem with your lava hound. And then your lava hound is going to kind of uh, stymie and tie up the supporting troops to that golem. In which time you're going to make sure you use your inferno dragon, you use your mega minion, you use your guards, whatever you need. Tombstone being the first choice, obviously. To kill that golem and then your surviving troops will hopefully by that time be able to engage and kill your opponent's supporting troops for their golem and then you can mount a counter attack in certain scenarios worst case scenario it's a wash and it's okay you know you just keep going and you pick your spots and with time as the match progresses you'll know what spells to possibly combine with your push or uh or against your your opponent's supporting troops to get even more value out of that tactic meaning let's say they're supporting with an e-wiz and a a mega minion behind their golem or something like that uh you can go ahead and go ahead and, and, or a baby dragon and a mega minion. You can use your lightning spell and also hit the tower, preferably, right? And at the same time, you will kill the golem with your tombstone, your guards, whatever, right? So you have a lot of options here, but you always want to go same lane. How about tip number five? And of course, this could easily be tip number one, and that is you have to. You absolutely have to punish your opponent's pumps. This is a Lava Hound deck, which is a heavy deck without a pump. You have two good pump killers. You have Lightning, and even if you're playing Lava Loon, you'll have Fireball or whatever. You'll always have a big spell in a Lava Hound deck or Poison. You have to make sure you attack your opponent's pumps. You can obviously use your Miner in this deck. That's totally fine. But if they block it, be ready with your Lightning, hopefully getting some value. Uh, you really need to stop the, your opponent from pumping up because if your opponent, whether they're playing three musketeers or a golem deck and they have pump, if they have that advantage over you, you're going to be in trouble. This deck cannot keep up. Even three musketeers, even though we have lightning, 
your opponent will be a couple steps ahead of you. Every opponent who, who runs three Musketeers is ready with either a Battle Ram or a Dark Prince and will play in the same lane as soon as they know that you're running Lightning. So you can't allow them to just cycle three Musketeers and totally overwhelm you. And against the Golem deck, you're never going to be able to use a tactic we talked about in tip number four if they have a huge elixir advantage over you, right? So really important, Timo says, you have to attack those pumps. Even if they're running three Musketeers, you use your lightning if you have to, if you don't have minor, because there's no way you're going to be able to beat a matchup if they have the elixir advantage. So guys, those are the five tips. I do want to end with kind of reviewing this gameplay here. As you can see, we've reviewed a couple difficult matchups already, and now we're going against an Inferno Tower version of uh, kind of the Zap Bait or Log Bait Control. It's kind of an interesting deck, but we see this deck going around a lot lately. Good arrows there taking out that Princess, and this is going to be GG here because one more hit from that Miner takes it into Lightning range. The Lightning doing the thing, and Teemo walks away with the dub. Let's go ahead and move into one more replay, guys, against a Golem deck because, again, Golem decks can be tricky. It's the Golem Double Prince deck. You guys, if you miss this video, I don't say this in a self-serving way, make sure you check it out. I uploaded a video on this Golem Double Prince Baby Dragon deck the day of the balance changes or the day before they hit, saying this deck would be the most powerful in the game. And it is the best deck that I've played in quite a long time. So I would go ahead and watch that video. It's an awesome deck and I really was happy with that video. So check it out for sure. I'll link it in the description below to you guys. So here we go. We're going against this Golem deck. We're going to go in double speed here. We're going to block that Prince with the guards. Again, Tombstone and Guards. Just make sure we have them in cycle here. We're always going to drop our Tombstone against Double Prince, whether it be a Giant Double Prince deck or a Golem Double Prince deck, because those Skeletons can stymie even a Dark Prince coming your way by a plenty of time for your Inferno Dragon and your Tower to finish off that push. So again, just like we talked about, we're going to go Lava Hound in the same lane as the golem let's see how this plays out here we drop down our guards we drop down our inferno dragon meanwhile the baby dragon is caught up on our uh, lava hound so our guards our skeletons they can kind of you know roam free <laughs> nothing to worry about right so we have a little bit of a counter attack we do some chip damage we get the tower down to 441 meanwhile we're going to reset with another tombstone here again stopping those princes we have to use a defensive lightning but it's okay guys we're going to get some chip damage with that minor Tornado fails there at the end. Doesn't matter. Either way, we, we would have had it with Lightning. So, guys, huge shout-out to Timo again for coming on. He's a Sandstorm pro. He wanted to give a huge thank you to Hudat. He said Hudat does so much for the Sandstorm community. And, of course, I can vouch for that as so many pros from Sandstorm would come on want me to give shout-outs to Hudat. So, there it is. Shout-out to Hudat. Also, a shout-out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And, as always, take care, guys.